story recapped here. Today I'm going to explain an action and sci-fi show called Love, Death and Robots, Snow in the Desert. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The sun beats down on the dry lands, spreading intense heat on the desert planet of Vatch. Snow, a lone wanderer, is garbed in fully covered attire to protect himself from the sun exposure. As Snow walks further into the arid land, he walks past glass cages that hold criminals. A desperate hand slams on the glass cage, condensation filling the enclosure, as the wrongdoers get punished for their crimes. One of such is the mere act of stealing water. Further into town, Snow goes to an outlander merchant's stall, asking for a package he ordered from Earth. The merchant tells him that obtaining goods from Earth is starting to become a more difficult feat, thus prices are going higher. When the merchant offers Snow some synthetic analogs, Snow just tells him to shut up and give him the package. After receiving the package, Snow orders another 2 kilos of the goods before leaving, saying he'll be back in a month. As he walks away, Snow passes by screen monitors displaying bounties on wanted targets, including his. Unwinding, Snow sits down at a pub, ordering a glass of beer. The waiter places his drink on the table, tapping away on a keypad attached to the rim of the glass to unlock the drink. Muttering a quick thanks, Snow sips on his beer as a server walks away. On his spot, a woman, Herald, who's sitting by the bar, has a full view of his position. Just as Herald turns to look at Snow, a group of bounty hunters obstructs Herald's view. Three humanoid figures in varying sizes, yet equally jacked, stand intimidatingly in front of Snow. Their leader immediately points out Snow's identity, calling him an albino. Snow feigns innocence, saying he isn't Snow. The leader slams her hands on the table, angrily telling Snow not to mess with them. But Snow doubles down on his lie, saying his name is Jelda Conley and is referred to as Whitney. Pointing out that they're bounty hunters, Snow asks what they want with their target, still pretending he's not Snow. The leader explains that a merchant named Barris put out a hit for a huge reward on Snow's balls. Chuckling at the answer, Snow asks why Barris wants those, but the leader says her job ends with taking Snow's life, not answering questions. Whether he's actually Snow or not, the leader challenges him to a brawl, but Snow tells her that he's never killed anyone who didn't try to kill him first. Not listening to his words, the leader shouts her challenge to the entire pub, saying it puts within her rights. Though she commands Snow to stand up, he doesn't budge. With her eyes narrowing, she quickly draws her gun, but Snow is too quick, immediately firing a blast against the leader. Right away, Snow shoots the second hunter, but the third one is able to shoot off his hand with a shotgun. Snow struggles to get up as a third hunter smacks him with his gun to keep him down. Staying rooted on the ground, Snow watches as the hunter reloads his gun to accomplish the bounty. However, in the blink of an eye, the hunter falls as a sudden stab from behind ends his life. Seeing the assaulter, Herald, Snow reaches for his gun, but she assures him that she means no harm unless harm is meant. Taking a cloth, Snow covers his bleeding stump, saying he must get going before accidentally offering his severed limb to shake Herald's hand. Realizing his mistake, Snow quickly replaces the fist bump with his left hand. Just as Snow walks away, another bounty hunter, Mech, notices him, notifying her team that she has found Snow and thus, they should rendezvous. Underneath the starry sky, Snow camps out amidst the barren lands, eating dinner by himself. Footsteps approach him from a distance, and when he looks, he sees that it's just Herald. After taking the last bites of his dinner, Snow looks down at his empty pan and apologizes to Herald, saying he's not used to company. Herald assures him that she's not hungry. Instead, all she wants is to travel with Snow. Unsure, Snow tells her that he's crossing the Theron Plain, which isn't easy. However, Herald is filled with certainty, assuring Snow that she has no problem with that. Still, Snow wants to ponder over it. As the sun starts to peek over the horizon, Snow asks whether Herald has a day tent, but she merely shakes her head, so Snow offers to share his. Inside a cocoon-like tent, Snow opens a cooling device to protect them from the worst of the heat. As Snow removes the temporary cover of his stump, Herald notices mild growth on his hand, so Snow excuses that he's a fast healer. Herald inspects his hand before Snow takes it back, so they prepare to sleep through the day. Laying down next to each other, Herald stares at Snow for a while before before she closes her eyes. When nighttime comes, the two set back on their trail. Whilst walking, Snow explains why bounty hunters are after him, but Herald already knows about Snow's case. She explains her understanding of the gonadotropin releasing hormone that his body produces, because his cells are regenerative, hence making him immortal. Herald reckons that his hand will regrow in a week, but Snow thinks it'll be less. Afterward, Herald confesses that she works for Earth Central Intelligence, saying they want the same thing as Barris, but Herald is no bounty hunter. Instead, Earth Central Intelligence wants Snow to willingly come with them, because whoever decodes his reproductive system controls immortality, a knowledge that could destabilize the entire protectorate. Snow asks why Herald won't take an easy solution to their problems and just kill him. 
But Herald points out that central intelligence doesn't suppress intelligence. Snow says morality is a human construct, assuming artificial intelligence doesn't care about such stuff. But Herald claims such concepts were created to protect the greater good. Afterward, Herald asks whether Snow wants to come with her. Concluding the conversation, Snow brushes off her invitation and instead notifies her that they'll be arriving at his home in about two days' walk, so they should keep moving. Trekking through the lands, they arrive at a terrain of canyons where Snow pushes through a secret door amidst the cliffs. They rise through a lift as Snow tells Hero that he discovered the place 200 years ago and has been improving it ever since. Looking around, Hero observes Snow's home with much awe, then asks how long he's been alive. Dodging the question, Snow tells her to be comfortable, pointing her toward where she can find a change of clothes. He also tells her that there's a lot of water around. In the comfort of his privacy, Snow sits in front of a sunset view, opening his package from Earth. Inside the box is a batch of ripe strawberries, which Snow savors as he takes one in his mouth. When Herald walks in, she asks whose dress she's wearing, so Snow says it's his wife, who died 123 years ago. Snow recounts how his wife killed herself after she grew old, yet Snow stayed the same. Herald slowly walks towards Snow, softly caressing his face before leaning in for a kiss, which Snow welcomes. They spend a passionate moment together, but Herald wakes up alone, noticing an alarm that alerts her of danger. Looking at the security footage, Herald notices an intruder ship parked outside their location. Ready to collect the bounty on Snow, Barry's crew rolls out with their weapons. As the bounty hunters split up, Snow gets the jump on Mech, sneakily jumping behind the hunter and stabbing her to death. The rest of the hunters continue to check on each other through radio comms, but due to Mech's lack of response, Trot is ordered to check on her. Seeing their comrade's dead body, Trot immediately warns the rest of Snow's presence, telling them that Mech is dead. As they keep an eye out, Snow ambushes another hunter, Jarilla. But despite landing a punch, Jarilla is able to fight back, slamming him on a nearby rock. They go head to head, throwing hit after hit. Down on the ground, Snow throws a knife at Jarilla, striking her in the chest. Still, Jarilla braves through it, continuing to butt heads with Snow. Jarilla tries to take out her gun, hoping to shoot, but Snow is fast to block her attempts. Instead, Snow puts her in a chokehold as Jarit, Jarilla's husband, holds him at gunpoint. Jarilla calls out to Jarit for help. But despite the hostage situation, Jarit doesn't hesitate to shoot, obliterating Jarilla in the crossfire as Snow runs to safety. Immediately, Jarit notifies his team that Snow killed Jarilla, warning Trot that Snow is coming his way. Trot cautiously looks around, holding two guns. When Snow appears from behind the rocks, he shoots off one of Trot's guns, but Trot fires back right away, obliterating his right arm and left leg. Snow becomes immobile, but as Trot checks on his body, Snow takes the opportunity to pull him down. With barely any strength left, Snow crawls with his remaining limbs, reaching for a gun and shooting Trot in the head. He slumps on the ground, letting his guard down, but Jarit appears. Snow keeps his hand on the gun, although this proves useless as Jarit merely kicks it away from him. Holding a knife over Snow, Jarit tells him that once he gets Snow's sack, he'll take his time cutting on the rest. Feeling a presence behind him, Jarit turns around to shoot at the invader, who has a direct sniper shot on his head. With a bruised and battered face, Snow's vision is blurred as he watches Herald come closer. But as his eyes adjust to see her, Snow can only watch in horror as her head gets shot at the side. Herald falls to the ground as Barris walks towards Snow, starting his monologue. Barris states his confusion on how it doesn't make sense that Snow has lived for centuries, yet chose to live on a less desirable planet. Still, Barris aims the gun at Snow, saying he'll die here, but a hand bursts through his chest, spilling blood everywhere. Herald throws Barris' body away, revealing her synthetic body highlighted by the glowing sun behind her. Snow stares at her before he passes out. When Snow wakes up, he's already patched up with Herald watching over him. Snow reaches out to Herald's face, asking about her bodily components. Herald explains that she used to be a human who got in an accident long ago. Underneath her current synth flesh and ceramel are her human spinal column, nerve tissue, and mostly human brain. Holding on to Snow, Herald tells him that she's been alone for a long time too. Once more, they slowly lean into each other, kissing on the overlooking view of the sunset. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.